theyeshiva.net. Pinchas, top, second column, one, two, three, four, five, six, seven. Seven lines from the top. V'kachu inyan atfila. So the ultimate sublimation of the yesh to the ayin is in the karbonus. In the mice of karbonus, it's not that you destroy an animal, you elevate the animal. You don't want to decimate the beast, you want to sublimate the beast. And the idea of the carbon was always accompanied with music. Why was the carbon accompanied with music? And this music was always there together with the carbon. You had both vocalists and you had musicians. You know, in the Beis Hamikdash, every day, they had vocalists and musicians. Both. The Levium had the Levium were musicians, but they were also vocalists. In fact, you can even have other Jews who played music over there. And they all accompanied, all these musical great concertos accompanied the Carbonus in the morning and in the evening, in the afternoon. And the reason is because, as we said, Kol Bali Hashir, Yoytzin Bashir, that the Shir, the music represents going out of the Yesh into the Ayin, going out of a space of somethingness into a space of nothingness, nothingness in the sense of going back to your source, we are not separate from the ultimate source, and that's what the carbon represents, and therefore the carbon is the ultimate aliyah of the nefesh behema, the soul of the behema, back to its source, pnei sharma asmoil or pnei arya el hayomin. The kachu in your atfila. Is it true that the behema cannot get from yeshmai and only through carbon, but a person can without getting killed? I guess. That's yeah. Why on the people. Yeah. Yeah. But that's the idea of tefillah. That's what he's going to explain now how it re- re- relates to a person. You're right. The kachu inyan tefillah. And this is also the concept of tefillah of davening. Kihine noida, it's known. Shemichal sar hagadol makriv nishmoiseyem shal Yisrael al gabi hamizbeach. It's brought in Svarim that michal. And the Chal here is called Sar HaGadol. The Great Sar. Is Makriv. He offers the souls of Yisrael on top of the altar. The Gemara says this in Masech uh, Chagigid, Afyud Beis, according to the Gears of the Bach there, that Michal, the Great Angel, offers the Jewish souls on top of the altar. In other words, the concept of tefillah is like the carbon in the sense that just like the behemah went up onto the altar on the Mizbeach. And as a result of that, the nefesh of the behemah was traced back to its shayrish, its source. The same is true with the neshama of the Jew by tefillah. We say this in Davening, in Ritzei, in the Brach of Ritzei. Ritzei Hashem alekeinu ba'amchi Yisrael v'lesfilosam she'ei v'hoshev ha'avoyd l'advir be'isecha you remember? Anybody remembers the brach of Ritzei? I don't mean to bring up nightmares <laughs> of Shachas Men Chemaidev. Very good. Wow. So what's Pshat in these words? What's Pshat in these words? What's that? Ve'ishe Yisrael, the fires of the Jewish people. Ishe is fires. The fires of Yisrael and their tefillah, you should accept willingly. Who's talking about Ishe Yisrael? This, not, no, this doesn't bother anybody, right? Somehow, Shmon asks, ah? Uh, so, what Karbon is today? What is it? Ve'ishe Yisrael. So he says, "V'ishi Yisrael is filosom." The Isha Yisrael, the fires of the Jewish people, and their tefillah. So what do we see from here? We see that Isha Yisrael and tefillah are the same thing; they're similar. Isha Yisrael, the filosom ba'avas kabel beratzen. In other words, tefillah is Isha Yisrael. What's the connection? Isha Yisrael means the karbonas that the Jewish people brought, the fires of the Jewish people. In other words, they used to create a fire by burning the carbonus on the Mizbeach, which added to the fire as well. And their tefillah is also like the fire. 
Why? Because Michal Sar HaGadol. By Tefillah is Makriv Dair Nishamas on the Mizbeach. So he says, V'ishi Yisrael, O Sfilosom, the Ishi Yisrael on their Tefillah. Ulamata B'Yislapshus B'Guf HaGashni. When the Nishama comes down here in the body, Hupchines Aver Rabba HaBom El Maila B'Tefillosom. It's the great love that comes from above during the evening, l'haloisim, to elevate them. Ulakasher nafshem shal Yisrael belekim chayim. And to connect the soul of Yisrael with the living God, l'adovka b'ein insoy baruchu mamish, and to cleave mamish with the infinite light of the insoyf. So that is a similar idea of the carbon, just like by the carbon. The soul of the behemah was elevated back to its source in insoyf, the yesh is brought back to the ayin. So by tefillah too, the nefesh of the Jew is mekusher, becomes one with alakim chayim and experiences dveikas with ein soif. And this is a fire. There's a fire. What's the fire? The fire represents that there's a fire of Hashem, a love that comes from above to elevate, just like a fire consumes the flesh of the carbon. And the behemoth goes back. The soul goes back to its origin in the Merkava, even though it came down here as a physical animal. But it's really rooted in the Ayin, so the soul of the Jew that's in the body through the fire. The fire is the Av, that comes Melmaila, it's like the fire on the Mizbech, that's what it means Mechol. Mechol is the Sar of Av, Sar HaChesed, Gavriel, the Sar HaGvura. Mechol's love, he creates the fire that burns up the Neshamas. What does it mean burns up? It consumes the Neshamas on the Mizbech to be completely Dovok with Ainsaf. That's so, so in other words, so that's why Tfila and Karbonus have a di- profound similarity. Isha Yisrael Usfilosam work together. And the word after that is Ba'ava. The key in both of them is remember we spoke about the Ava. The Koyan is Isha Chesed. And the Arye, which eats up the Karbonus, is Chesed. And the fire here, he says, is the Ava of uh, that comes Milmaila. With the Ava Sekabo Beratzen. But their fires and their davening. That's what the Pasuk says. Tzavaz B'nai Yisrova Martale Miskarboni. Lachmi Leishai. My bread from my fire. Pirush Leishai is Leisha Li. Shesurfim Uboyer Yemei Lai. They burn to me. Why is it my fire? Lachmi Leishai, my fire. It's a fire from me. They're burning to me. The Ainu Asrafim. Referring to the Srafim, Shem Chinnis Yakoid, you could age by a Rebelibam Tamid. Yakoid, you could age. There's an excessively flaming blaze that always burns in their heart. Shuka Gdoyla with a tremendous desire of an Ifla, a wondrous craving. Ba'ava as an intense love, Kirishveyesh, like glowing fire, Le Bottle, Vili Kol, Bayrin Saif Baruch. To be submerged and one with the Oyrin Saif Machmas Asagos, Magdoyla. Because the Srofim represent the Malachim that exist in Elam Abriya, which is much deeper than Yitzir and Asiya, and therefore their comprehension is so profound, so that the fire by them doesn't stop burning. They're called Srofim. Other Malachim are not called Srofim. They're called Srofim. Srofim comes from the word Saraf, which means Ashtik fire, Ashtik Srefa. He, he is fire. Because their whole mitzvah is one big fire of love that they want to be submerged. This carbon becomes for them bread. It becomes their bread. My fires get bread. What's pshada becomes their bread. We said before, no blade of grass down here doesn't have a mazel that doesn't tell it to grow. So that doesn't have a mazel. Weiter. As we learned before, the mazel receives its energy from the sediments of the Ifan. Each one receives its energy from the one higher, and as we said before, one ayin on one level becomes a yesh on a higher level. Right? So the mazel is ayin legabe the gashmis, the mazel is yesh legabe the Ifanim. Ifanim is ayin legabe the mazel, right? It's yesh legabe the chayis for chayis hakodesh. Chayis hakodesh is ayin legabe the ifanim, and it's yesh legabe the srofim. Legabe the srofim, even the chayis hakodesh are yesh. So the carbon becomes bread for the srofim. V'lochein bahalo is a carbon lamayla. As the carbon goes up, oyle v'nichlo atchin a srofim. It goes deeper and deeper and deeper until it becomes submerged in srofim. V'nasa lehem chinas lechem. It becomes bread, nutrition. For the srofim, 
כמוי בחינס לחם, אמס עקל במי האדם ונעשה כבוסר ודם האדם מאמן שעד שנעשה לו עם אוזן, ומויסף לא כויח וחיוס. מה זה ברד? מה זה דפניציה של ברד? ברד זה סטייפל פוד. Just like bread gets digested in the abdomen, the stomach of man, and it becomes part of a person's flesh and blood to the point that it becomes nutritious for you and it gives you kayach and chiyas. When you eat food, that food is converted into your bloodstream. That food becomes part of your phys- physical structure. That food gives you kayach. The food gives you chiyas. That's what food really is. Food is about the nutrition that the body takes in to the point that it gets converted into the bodily structure itself, it becomes part of your bloodstream. Why does Hashem call a carbon bread? Because that's what it is. The carbon becomes digested. Just like food, it becomes digested and becomes part of you. It becomes digested and nichlal in the chayis, hakoidish, and the srafim achanasa lehem mozayn. Until it gives them food. The mois of koyach v'chiyus b'srafim la'aloysam it gives them chiyus. To go further up, to become drawn in and submerged in the essence of the King Mamash. So that's the process of Tfila and the process of Karbonus. So, Lachmi Le'ishai. When you bring a sheep, this sheep is called my bread. Whose bread? Lachmi, it's the bread Le'ishai. For my fire. It's bread for my fire. My bread for my fire. Who's my fire? My fire are the Serafim. They are called my fire. Why are they called my fire? Because they're always burning up to me. Their fire is to me. They say, this is Le'ishai. This is my fire. It's Eish Shali. They're burning up. Le'eish Shali. The Karbanas, the sheep, become bread. They become nutrition for those who are fiery towards me. They're burning up towards me, which is the level of the Sraf. Because they're in Olam Abriya. Remember. The process is, creation is me'ayin li'yesh. Avoid is going back, me'yesh la'ayin. Creation is the ladder coming down. Avoid is the ladder coming back up. One is the natural procedure of creation. One is the shinu yateva. The laughter, the comedy of life. By aligning every yesh back to the ayin. That is a very intense avoid. That's the avoid of tefillah. When you look at yourself before davening, what do you see? You see a yesh. That's what you see. When you look at yourself after davening, what do you see, Lenny? Ah, tazah. Ah, tazah. Say it good. Say it good. When you look at yourself before davening, you see a yesh. How do you know if you davened? If after davening, you take a look at yourself and you see ayin. Then you know you davened. If not, you got to daven again. What happens by davening? The Baal Shem Tev once said, you know what the Baal Shem Tev once said? That it's a ness by him, he's a miracle, that after davening he stays alive. That's what the Baal Shem Tev said. He said it's a ness, min shamayim, that after davening, he didn't say about himself, he, obviously he was talking about himself, but he said it's a ness that a Jew after davening stays alive. Now I would argue, I don't want to argue with the Baal Shem Tev, but I mean, with, not with everybody it's such a ness. <laughs> I, I know two or three people that it's not mamish a nest that they stay alive I mean every moment of life is a nest let me clarify but davening okay huh? but the Baal Shem Tov was describing a davening a davening that's a carbon it, would it be a nest if a behemoth stays alive after a carbon <laughs> yeah it would be a nest yeah <laughs> the behemoth after davening is that nest why because the, the, this is the idea of that. The idea of davening is don't look at yourself superficially. Davening is the time when you go back and you connect your outer self to your innermost core. You connect your yesh to the innermost ayin. You trace back your own soul. V'isha Yisrael usfilosam ba'av sekabel b'ratzayin. That's the process of the aliyah. That michal is makriv the neshama the mizbeach where the person looks at himself or herself and all they could see is just a fragmented piece of physical matter. But the truth is, davening is a very profound, it's the most profound avoid of a person. It's the person goes into a state where they really, really 
connect to their innermost divine core. And in that itself, there's a whole process. That's why davening goes through stages. Why is davening go through stages? So, you know, we go through davening, we do it fast. But really, it's different destinations. Davening is divided into sections. It's brought in in, in, in Teres Anist, in Arizal, in Balatanya's works, in Mechlal and Sifri Chesidus, that from the beginning of davening till Baruch Sha'amar is the first step of the ladder. That's what basically the first step, this four worlds, as he says, Olam Hasiya, Olam Hayetzira, Olam Abriya, Olam Atzilus. In each world, the Yesh becomes more detached from its source, more broken, more fragmented. And in Davening, we climb back. We create the laughter, the tzchoik, the simcha of Livyosan, you become back mechuber. You create the link between yourself and the world, yourself and Hashem, yourself and everybody else, yourself and yourself. So the first stage is Til Baruch Shama, when you're allowed to speak, the Karbonis, the beginning of Hoidu, according to Nusach Sfad, Nusach Ashkenaz, it's uh, Hoidu is after Baruch Shama, but the point is Til Baruch Shama. That's step one. Step two of Davening is Psukkah de Zimra, till after Yishtabach, from Baruch Shama till after Yishtabach. And that's why there's a Kaddish. At every, whenever you go into a new world, you have to say Kaddish. You have to say Kaddish. Again, we hear Kaddishim. You know, it already comes, uh, Nacha Kaddish, Nacha Kaddish. Right? There was a guy, he would always say Kaddishim. Whenever he would walk into a shul, somebody would say, Oh, Torah, Kaddish, Kaddish. He would always say Kaddish. He said hundreds of Kaddishim. So once, he was in shul and he started to say Kaddish. Somebody said a Dvartayin on the Parsha. He said, Oh, Kaddish is Gadol. So somebody started to scream to him. Ain Marbin Bekadeshim, it said in Allah, you don't say extra Kadeshim, Stamazan. Ain Marbin Bekadeshim. He says, Where does that say? The guy says, It's a Halacha. It's a Halacha, he is God of his Kadesh. It's a Nacha Kadesh, Nacha Kadesh, Nacha Kadesh. It's like some people, they live off it. But the truth is, a Kadesh is not a Pasha to think. You say, on a, you say Yard site, you say Kadesh, it's not a Pasha to think, a Kadesh. It affects souls. A Kadesh affects an Ashama. That's why when people have a yard site or, or a velas or chiyuvim and they say Kaddish and people speak in the middle of their Kaddish, it's extremely insensitive. Even though they don't mean it to, they don't mean it to be insensitive, they're just having a juicy conversation. Yeah? I once asked somebody why he doesn't stop speaking in shul. So he says, if I, if I want to be quiet, I can stay home. <laughs> I come to shul to have conversations. At home, my wife makes me be quiet. But the truth is, it's an insensitive, very insensitive thing. Because because a Kaddish is it's it's an aliyah, it's not a Pasha to think. So between each world there's always a Kaddish. So after Yishtabach there's another Kaddish. Then there is Birchis Krishma and Krishma, Til Shmaina Asra, and then the Shmaina Asra. So you have four sections. You have Til Baruch Shamar, number one, till after Yishtabach number two, number three is Birchis Krishma and Krishma, Til Gal Yisrael, and then before Shmaina Asra. The first step is Asiya. In Pesukah de Zimra, you go into Olam HaYitzira. Till Baruch Sha'amar, you're climbing up through the world of action. Then you go into the world of formation. Then you go into the world of creation, Abriya, and Shmanesra is the world of Atzillus. It's complete silence. And now after Shmanesra, you got to come down. So now you have four sections after Shmanesra. That's why there's Ashri of Olitzian, and then you have the Shir Shalyoyim, and then you have Kave, and you have Aleinu. You have Til Ashir Valetziyat, Ashir Valetziyat, Shir Shalyayim, Kave, and Aleinu. That's coming down. No huh? No Hal Azlus Lekarit Allah Ben Musa. Isaac's point seems to be very valid. Is that Avoida went from a very physical thing to now being complete, you know, it's, it's verbal and, and kavana. It, it, the contrast is very You're right. strong. You're right. We couldn't be further from, from the Avoida from the time of the base of Mikdash. You're right. It also it, it evolves that way, generally speaking. In the beginning of Jewish history, there was a place, the Beis Hamikdash, the Mishkan. 
the divine energy was focused on a place. You came to the Beis Hamikdash, right? After the Churban Beis Hamikdash, they created Takeshuls and Bate Medrash, so the place, you're not so limited by space anymore. And the big focus became on times. Shabbos, Yom Tif, designated times. So from space, you go into time. And then as the generations continue, the focus becomes on the soul, on the person himself or herself, on the individual. So you're right, it goes through a process. By the carbon, it's a very, very physical, concrete avoider with an animal. Today, the avoider is not with an animal, generally speaking. Avoider is with the person internally, with who you are as a person. But the davening is as serious as a carbon in the sense that it's not shot a person just gets up to daven and says words and finishes davening and goes home and another davening bites the dust. Real davening is that there is a journey, a person goes on a journey through davening. That's why the Wachsidim who would daven every day, I mean, I knew such people, who would daven four or five hours a day shachras. What's there to do? What do you do for four or five hours? It's kind of sugar it. Right? Most people would commit suicide. A half an hour is already, they're losing it. 25 minutes, mele, uh, 7, 8 minutes they can handle. 45 minutes, there many people go crazy. An hour, never mind. But the president depends on how you look at it. If it's a journey of just saying words, then it's very boring. If it's an internal, emotional journey from a person's own yesh to a person's own ayin, then it's extremely powerful. It's also thrilling, it's also exhilarating. And it's also hard work. So therefore, in this process of going into davening, the person goes in as one person. So the Baal Shem Tov was saying, if you understand that, what davening is, then it's indeed a miracle that he stays alive. Because of the intensity of the process of the person going back into it. But the truth is, it's hard, because we need the tools. What, what do you even do? I get up, okay, what am I supposed to do now? What do I do now? Like... It's a little far from us, this. We have to learn it. We have to rediscover it. What are the tools for this? How do I do this? What do I think about? Like, I don't know what you're talking about. It's all very nice, but practically speaking, we need the tools to be able to even begin to experience this. You relate to this? Okay. I, I want to add something. I'm not sure if I can verbalize it, but this section we learned here now that today the, uh, the downing takes the place of the Kabbalists. All these intermediaries, all these Malachim. I thought Hashem has the direct line to Hashem. Why do we have to go through this? It's almost like it speaks. It's like a dual track. It's like it speaks to maybe the the uh, that's a good question. Why is he talking here about the Malachim? Don't we speak directly to Hashem? We don't need the Malachim as intermediaries. He's not referring here to the Malachim as intermediaries. He's referring here to the Malachim as different stages of consciousness. In the process of the yesh going back to its source, it goes through different stages. Like he said, you start with the geshem, you go to the mazel. The mazel goes to the ifanim, ifanim goes to the chayas, chayas goes to the srofim. These are stages on the ladder of davening where the person develops a deeper sensitivity to who they are. In other words, there is the way the person is before davening. Who are you before davening? Who am I before davening? I am the physical human being who lives here on earth. I look in the mirror, physically or psychologically, and this is how I, identi I identify myself. Isn't that really meditation? Yes, that's what it is. <laughs> so why is it that we're not taught to meditate more in a dog? <laughs> that's, that's, you're right. I, mean, I don't have an answer to your question. That's, that's what we're really doing. Yes, his, it's called his boininus. His boininus was the Balatanya's word for meditation, thoughtfulness, mindfulness. Extremely. That's the core of Avaidas Hashem. Yeah. 
Yes. In fact, according to him, the whole carbonus was a very deep meditation. It wasn't an animal that you were burning. That too, it was your own animal that was going up. And that's why there was music. Why was there music? Why is who plays music in a shlachtos? You ever went to a shlachtos? It's, I mean, you could play music there, but you don't have like, you know, violinists. With it's not a symphony. It's a mod nazach, right? Like this base amikdash was a very interesting place. <laughs> so the pshat is because there was really a very spiritual experience in the base amikdash. The base amikdash wasn't just a place of blood and goriness and people walking in blood. I mean, that's what it looks like when you read the, the you know, the mission. It looks like it was just a bloody place. But the design, you know, who, you don't design a shlachtais with such perfection, you know, in terms of beauty and aesthetics. <laughs> They're going to slaughter animals here. Right, take a guy, and it's not exactly a geshmaka place. The Beis HaMikdash was a place of the shechina. That means there was a whole other experience going on. So in many ways, the tefillah, allows us to focus on the pnimius of the Beis HaMikdash, not only on the externalities of the Beis HaMikdash. So he's asking, so why doesn't davening look like that? So what am I supposed to answer you? I have to ask the question. I didn't expect that. I've heard this concept from Rabbi Jacobson before, but I, I'm reiterating the question, really, not because it seems to be a systemic problem, I don't know how we got there, but it, I, I just raised the question. The objective is to go to get to the When the Balatanya was a young man, he decided he needs a Rebbe because he was self-taught. So he said, to, he said as follows. He said, I heard that there were two centers where I can go to. I can go to Vilna, which was the place of the Vilna Gong, who was legendary. I can go to Mizrich in the Ukraine, where the Mezritsha Magid lived. I heard that in Vilna they teach you how to learn. In Mizrich they teach you how to daven. So the Balatanya said, As I learn then, habich shengikent abisum. Daven then habich bechal nishikent. Ben chigayin in Mizrich. Learning, I knew a little bit how to learn. This is when he was 20. Davening, I bechal didn't know how to daven. So he decided to go to Mizrich. But since he was a Litvak by nature, they called him a Litvak, so he was very unimpressed when he went to Mizrich. He decided, it's not for him. He's going to go to Vilna. History would have looked different. <laughs> What happened? As he was leaving, a Yid came into the Mizrich Magid, to the Beis Medrash, with a lung, a reya. A lung, a shailin, a reya. A lung of an animal, a cow. So the Magid took a look, and it was very complicated. And he started to analyze the lung from Hilchus Trefus and Shulchan Aruch, Mesech Techulen. And the Alter Rebbe was so impressed with the analysis of the Reya, of the Magid, the Lomdas, the Ga'inus of the Mezizhman was a big god. He was so impressed with the Ga'inus, he said uh, he could stay. Because he couldn't respect a place where uh, Alter Rebbe was really a tremendous Balnigla. His, his, his Koyach and Lomdas was... Mamish, uh, the Rakhachava would say it was like the Rambam. It was something unique, his lambdas. It was a chad bedada. They said on him when he was Bar uh, Mitzvah Bacher, Rav Tano Polig, they said. So, uh, so he needed a place where there would be that level of lambdas. But you see here the Nakuda that uh, learning in many ways is also a forgotten art. That's the truth. Learning, we also have to know how to learn. Most yeshivas and shiurim It's a certain type, type of learning, but it's often very limited, very impoverished type of learning. Besides the fact that people don't cover ground, and in some yeshivas you learn nine blada a year, and nobody knows anything else, that's besides the issue, but even the style is often very weak, very impoverished. But davening, learning at least is a zeche, the zeche lamikdash, at least we have svadim. But davening is mamish often a forgotten art. So uh, it's really, a, so, so a person, there's a destination, there's a journey. Till Baruch Shamar, there's one journey. Till Baruch Hu is a second exit. Till Shmanes is a third exit. Shmanes is another exit. Then there's the journey back down. 
But the first prerequisite for any journey is that you have to fasten your seatbelt. You have to go into a space. You have to move into the car. You have to sit down. And you have to, you know when you're taking a road trip to Miami? You ever took a road trip to Miami? I also didn't. I take an airplane. But those who take road trips, right? You have to, before everything, you have to go into a mode. Right? By the world of the Chassidim, it was called metut on the gartel. You put on the gartel. What is that? It's going into the space. You're going out with somebody for a special a special encounter, courtship, as they used to call it. Today they have other names for it, but they used to call it courtship. The first thing is you have to create the mental space for it. You have to create the mental space for it. person goes on a date with, with, with his wife, yeah? And he goes in with a computer to the car, yeah? With, with, I mean, that's the derech by people. They take a laptop, they take an iPhone, yeah? Because she, she goes shopping for too long, he should be able to do his work. So you can have a connection. The person has to go into a mental space of menuchas hanefesh, let go of everything. That's why it's brought in Rambam and Shulchan Aruch that before davening, yasir kolam achshavus hamatridus, a person really needs to go into a mental space before you start the journey even. You go into the car, you have to sit down, you have to be there, you have to be present. Ayid once came to the Chayza of Lublin and he said that he has machshavus zaras during davening. He has a lot of alien thoughts during davening. So he says, no, 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 no. He says, the tefillah is the machshav zara. <laughs> the, the davening is the alien thoughts. <laughs> he says, it's not, in other words, if you're davening, you can have machshav zaras. If you didn't start davening, so then the tefillah is the machshav zara. You never stop thinking about anything. So now you start davening, the tefillah is confusing you. But instead of having a sign, asr le daber b'sha'as tefillah it should say, asr le spalol b'sha'as ha-dibur. It's not you're not allowed to speak in the middle of davening. You're not allowed to daven in the middle of speaking. You're in the middle of speaking. What's daven still? So when that happens, it's not pshat. The person, the person not, people say they have machshavas. They don't have machshavas zaris. The machshavas are not zaris. The machshavas are natural. The tefillah is zar. That's the issue. Why? Because it's very hard. Every person is busy and occupied and you're running and there's appointments and there's stress. And even if you wouldn't have appointments, even if you're on vacation, it's still very hard to daven. Because it's an avayda. <laughs> davening is, is, is challenging yourself. What is it challenging yourself to? It's challenging yourself to be able to go in to your most innocent and pure place the way you were in a state of ayin. And you still are there. What's Pshat to play you were in a state of ayin? The solar way, the light wave in the solar core. You could say in the sun also. The light wave in the solar core, when it's completely in a state of ayin, what's in a state of ayin? Not that it's nothing in the sense that it's a shmata. It's nothing that it's part of infinity. It's submerged in infinity. It doesn't have to be noticed. And then every stage goes lower and lower, or more detached, more detached, till you reach this place where I am today. So now we have a lot of cover-ups, a lot, a lot of cover-ups. Davening is removing one layer and then another layer and another layer and another layer and another layer and another layer. And, another layer. and in each layer there's more passion and more excitement and more fire. And then you come to the deepest layer and then there's absolute silence. Because there's no self-consciousness. That's why Shemayna Esther is supposed to be silent. Why? Because in absolute intimacy there's silence. There's no noise. Noise is when there's distance. When there's complete oneness, there's just silence. There's dvekas. You don't see anything. It's bachashai. And then there's the journey back down after, afterwards. So when a person re- starts relating to this, yes, the text of davening is designed for this also. It's not pshat, they chose text. Uh, uh, you know, they thought, okay, davening is 10 minutes, let's make it a little longer. Well, hakarain another few kapit eh, It's still too short. Let's put in a vuhurachem on Monday and Thursday to make their lives miserable. It's still too long. Let's hakarayin akave mitapitamaktoides. The yekers don't do that one. It's still too long. We'll put in all the carbonus. Why not make them a little more crazy? Right? What's going on here? The text of every section of davening is designed for that destination, for that exit. Till Baruch Shama is one world. After Baruch Shama is another world. It's chosen very carefully what text you discuss. 
guided. It's very guided. Yeah. It's very guided. Yes, yes, you're moving it along. There's a narrator. The narrator, the, the, the Mechabri HaSidr, the authors of the Siddur, were narrating the meditation. You relate to what I'm talking about? A chicken by Kapodas. This is an expression in Yiddish, yeah? You ever heard that expression? When you go to Kaporis, you take the chicken and you say, Bnei Adam, Yoshri Choshech Vatsal Do you ever see how the chicken looks at you while you're saying Bnei Adam? <laughs> you never. So next, Erev Yom Kippur, look at it, and then you'll understand what your teacher told you when you were five years old. Vos cooks the midon via hon of Bnei Adam. Via hon by Bnei Like the chicken by Bnei Adam, the way he looks at you. You never heard this expression? Yeah, this was one of the classic nurturing, self-confident, <laughs> building, Vos cooks the midon via hon of Bnei Adam. Kelbelin Eugen, etc. If Nuchem was here, he would add another few <laughs> compliments that he received. What's the exact title of that? Like a rooster by Bnei Adam. <laughs> a hen, a hen. A cook. A hen, a hen, yeah, a hen. Bnei Adam is the Nusach you say before Kapodis. Explain to you the Yiddish, the Yiddish, there's nothing like Yiddish expressions that grandmothers composed about people they liked, and even more importantly, about people they didn't like, yeah? <laughs> it was what somebody said, uh, also the, the, cur- the Yiddish curses are incredible. Uh, <laughs> yeah? Hanging by tog and brennen by nacht. Yeah? Hang by day and burn at night. All it's saying is all from there, is fallen, chutz from divas is to tve. <laughs> all your teeth should fall out besides the one that kills. Okay, all these uh, wonderful expressions. You don't have them in English. <coughs> they had a lot of time to deal with it and a lot of people, a lot of people to, to apply it with from the Shtetlach. Okay, so I'll call upon him. So this is the Nekudi here of the relationship between, between the Tefillah and the carbon. So it's very easy for a person just to move on and to stay in that place of Yesh without self-awareness, without self-introspection, without self-growth. But the process of davening is where the person has the courage to be able to shed more layers and more layers and more layers until they become comfortable in their nothingness, in their ayin. What does it mean to become comfortable in their nothingness? To become completely absorbed in their own real, real self where they don't need to protect themselves. They don't need to defend themselves. They don't need to be egotistical to exist because their existence is so real and so powerful and so one with the source that not being noticed, not being a separate mitzvah is the greatest sign that you exist. And the beginning of all Yerida is that transition from ayin to yesh. What type of yesh? Atzilas, Briya, Yitzilas. These are still very holy yeshes. They're very spiritual yeshes. And then you have the Yesh Nasiyah. The Yesh Nasiyah is completely fragmented, completely physical. And part of this journey is now climbing the ladder back. It says, Yaakov's dream was Sula Mutzav Aitzav Eroshim Agiyah Hashemayimah. Right? Sulam, the Zoyar says, Dot Sloisa. The ladder of Yaakov, that was davening. And the ladder had four rungs. The ladder begins on earth, and the Eroshim of the ladder is Magiyah Hashemayimah. And Malachi Elikim, Oilim V'yoridim. What's that Malachi Elikim? Malachim represents states of consciousness. The Malachim of Eifanim are the Malachim of Asiyah. Chayis HaKodesh HaYitzirah. Srofim Abriya. And then Atzillus is already higher than Malachim. When we speak about angels, we're not speaking about angels, you know, we look at angels dressed in Tachrichim and wings. Flying around. We don't need them as intimate. Angels represent spiritual energy, spiritual states of consciousness. What does life look like when you're in the world of Yitzira? You're an angel. You are your own angel. It's not like an angel outside of you. The Mishnah says you do a mitzvah, you create an angel. What does it mean? It means you are an angel. You reveal a state of emotional consciousness the way it's in Yitzira, the way it's in Bria, the way it's in Atzillus. You know the Maishim of the Baal Shem Tev? There was a chassid of the Baal Shem Tev who said that he wants to see a Leo Anavi. 
and he begged him and begged him and begged him. Said, what do you need a CLEO on, Navi? It's not for you. He says he begged he'll do anything. After many years, the Baal Shem Tov said, okay, I'll show you a Leo on Navi. And he told him that Erev Pesach, he should go to a particular city, and at the edge of the city there's a forest, and in the forest there's some caved-in home, and he should bring in a lot of food for this Dharim, pack up his wagon with food, and spend there the first two nights, of, the first two days of Pesach. He'll have Gilu Yeliyahu. So he got permission from his wife, and he filled up a wagon with food, and he came to the house before Pesach, and he knocks on the door, can I stay here? He said, you could stay, but we don't have food, we're very poor. He said, I brought food. So the kids go in and they bring in the food. They never had such a Pesach. It was a, a house with nine children, caved in roofs, broken windows, no clothes, no food, never starving kids. They were emaciated. They were very, very deprived. And here they saw, they never saw so much food in their life. Never mind, ate so much food in their life. They had a delicious, extraordinary Pesach. And they were fine people, but Eliyahu one of he didn't see. He, a fine Ayid, a fine, fine mother, a fine father, fine children, but no Eliyahu one of so he came back to the Baal Shem Tov extremely, extremely hurt. He said, I left my family for Pesach. I did what you said. Eliyahu Anavi, I didn't see. So the Baal Shem Tov says, go back to the house. But this time, don't go into the house. Stay outside of the house. So what should I do? Stand outside of the house. So he goes back. It's already Chalamoyed Pesach. And he stands outside of the house. And he's by the window. And he's standing. And suddenly, he hears a conversation between the husband and the wife. And the husband tells the wife, you know, I always thought I was a shlamazel. Meaning I have no mazel. But look what mazel I had this Pesach. What were the chances that a rich man would get stuck in front of our house right before Pesach filled with a wagon of food? This is called mazel. Mazel. And maybe this mazel will help us also for the last days of Pesach. Because we don't have anything left. So his wife gets upset at him and she says, Yankel, was hakstat shaynik? Was today stuck up? What are you telling me? Mazel, mazel, mazel. It wasn't mazel. It was Eliyo Anavi. <laughs> it was Eliyo Anavi who came and brought the food. And then he understood what the Boshamtiv meant. He was looking to see Eliyo Anavi. Who was Eliyo Anavi? He himself. In other words, the Boshamtiv was telling him, You want Gili Eliyo? I'll tell you what to do. I'll tell you what to do. Take a wagon, fill it up with food, go feed nine hungry children, look in the mirror and you'll see Leo on of you. So you could look in the mirror and see the devil. You could look in the mirror and see Leo on of you. Which mirror is right? Depends on you. Depends on you. I could look in the mirror and see one thing. I could look in the mirror and see another thing. It's both true. I am this and I'm this. Depends what I do. If I take a wagon, I fill it up with food, I give it to nine hungry children. I just see Eliyahu on me. Take a look at yourself, you see Eliyahu on me. And if not, not. So Hashem was saying, you're looking elsewhere for Elijah the prophet. Don't look anywhere else. You have to look here. That's the answer to your question. In the beginning, Yiddishkeit focused very much. Look there. Go to the Beis HaMikdash. When the Baal Shem Tov, the main emphasis became Don't look there, look here. Go inside yourself. That's the difference of Karbanis and Tfilah. The truth is, before the Chet HaEgel, it was supposed to be that way. Right? The Sepharna writes, the whole reason there's a Mishkan is only after the Chet HaEgel. Because really, the Gemara says in Saita that really every home was supposed to be a Beis HaMikdash. The Avayda was supposed to be with Pchayim. Every house had its own little temple. Then it became a place outside. You come closer to the end of Golas, it goes back to every house being a little base amikdash. The mikdash The becomes internal. So when you speak about all these malachim, srafim, chayas, afanim, you're not speaking about angels there. You're speaking about states of consciousness within yourself. There is who I am when I am here as a yesh. I'm one person. There's who I am when I can identify myself as a product of Asiya, a product of Yitzira, a product of Bria, a product of Atsilas. What is this? These are rungs of consciousness. Now you'll ask me, what's the difference if you're in Yitzira or Bria? And I'll tell you, it's the difference between Psukha de Zimra and Birchus Krishna. So you say, nothing happens. What's the difference who I am when I'm saying Yihich and who I am when I'm saying Avas Oilam? The Zalba Behema, yeah? 
that's because I didn't get into the car. <laughs> I didn't get into the car. I have no gas. So you're sitting in the car and you're saying, why is nothing happening? You know the Misa. So I'll finish with this. There was a Yid, a Yid for his 90th birthday. His wife asked him what he wants for a birthday present. So he said he never drove before. So he wants to get a license and he wants a car. So he got himself a license, got a car, 90th birthday. And he went out the first time on the highway. Anyway, he's on the highway, on the I-95, and he gets a call. And the wife says, Yanko, you got to be very, very careful. I just put on the radio. I put on the news. And they say that on the I-95, yeah, there's thousands and thousands of cars going in one direction. But there's one car. There's one car going in the opposite direction from everybody else. Yeah, who is that? Is that you? <laughs> one car? He says, one car is going in the opposite direction. All cars besides me are going in the opposite direction. I'm the only one who's going in the right direction. So you understand that the car is not going to get anywhere. Okay. This class is brought to you by the yeshiva.net. Please help us continue the classes. Make even a small contribution at www.theyeshiva.net slash donate.